In this video, you'll be learning about this topic. So Marty, I want to get into Great American Mining and what it is that you guys are doing today, because I just find this so exciting and just so fascinating because everything we're talking about of harnessing energy that's already there, but it's not being put into any type of productive use. But now through what you guys are doing, it is. So explain to this in a first principles kind of way for people just from start to finish to really kind of visualize what it is we're talking about and what it is you're doing, because it's fascinating. Yes, Great American Mining Story starts the search for cheap, abundant energy. You know, like I said earlier, the goal of miners, especially if you're running a mining business, is to drive your cost of power production down as low as possible. So on our journey to find cheap, abundant energy that will allow us to scale, we stumbled into the oil and gas industry. Actually, our head engineer, Reit, was at a, a county fair in Utah or state fair in Utah and just talking to a buddy of his in the oil and gas industry was explaining our problem of, of what we were trying to do in regards to cheap energy. And his buddy said, hey, I have this water treatment facility and we're just flaring gas into the atmosphere. I believe we have like 50 MCFD. If you want to come plug in a generator and hook up those miners, you can certainly make that happen. And that was basically the start of the journey that, that we went on. And so we went there, we plugged in a generator, plugged in a pipeline that took the gas from where it would be flared in a, in a flare, like the stack that's behind me in this video. Instead of piping it to the flare stack, just piped it to a generator that converted the energy into electricity. And that was used to run our miners. And that was our first prototype. We said, hey, this works. So for the last three years or two and a half years, we've been going around the oil and gas industry, particularly in North Dakota in the Bakken, because North Dakota has very strict flaring regulations. Uh, and basically our value prop to producers is, hey, we know that if you flare a certain amount, you're going to have to stop oil production. The regulators in North Dakota are very strict. They have drones flying over fields and really trying to, to measure how much each producer is flaring. And after you flare a certain amount, they, the regulators come in and say, hey, you have to shut down production. You're contributing too much CO2 and methane to the atmosphere. And so we come in and we say, hey, instead of flaring that gas, why don't we do an offtake agreement? We'll buy that gas from you for very cheap. Instead of flaring, you'll be able to just pipe it to our generators. We'll consume it or excuse me, convert it to electricity using an EPA certified generator. We'll mine Bitcoin with it. That's how our pitch started. And it's sort of evolving as the, the producers sort of understand what's going on in the 20 and 40 foot shipping containers that we bring onto their well pads are producing. Talk the containers real fast. So you've got a 20 to 30 foot container that's filled up with mining rigs. It's pretty simple, right? The infrastructure on the well pad, you, you get a pipe that takes the, the gas and pipes it to your generator. We daisy chain a few generators together just in case one goes down, the whole container doesn't go down. You can keep hashing the energy from that generator to a power distribution unit that exists within the container. And then that PDU distributes the electricity to each individual miner in the 20 foot shipping container. We can fit, I believe, like 160 M20Ss. Um, and as the models keep going up and down, you, you can get a little creative and fit more. You can get, that's the thing about these containers. Harry mentioned power density earlier. These, these, these containers are extremely energy dense. And so about like a 20 foot container, depending on what model can produce anywhere from 750 kilowatts to 1.2 megawatts of energy on the oil field, depending on the BTU content of the gas. Let's assume it's clean gas at 1100 BTU and you're producing 120 MCFD. You can consume, that would be like a megawatt of a mining operation there. So we come on and that's the, the beauty of it. These are very modular containers and a modular solution to their problem. It takes up very little real estate on the well pad. Again, we say, hey, instead of flaring that gas, let's run it to our generators and plug it into this container. The infrastructure is pretty straightforward and, and uh, we have some fans to help regulate airflow and some filters to make sure it doesn't get too dusty. If you understand the physics of what's going on, particularly around the airflow, you can get these boxes up and running and make sure that they have significant uptime. One thing we're very proud of is that we've had 98% uptime in the field, which is comparable to like warehouse mining. So now as they're funneling this gas to your rigs, to your generators that's, that energize your rigs, they're able to keep doing their operations for longer because they're not flaring. Is that correct? Yes. They're able to extract more oil and push more to market. 
specifically in North Dakota, but seems that the posturing in the industry throughout the United States is, is moving towards the North Dakota model. Texas Railroad Commission is, is posturing like they're going to get strict with flaring specifically. I want to just ground us in, in, some, in some framing. How much cleaner is it to do it this way, to run the, the flare or the venting through a gen set or generator than it is relative to what they were doing previously? Like, like what's the delta look like? It depends on where you are. Right? It depends on the type of flare. And depends how, how windy it is. So in North Dakota, especially in the winter, it gets very windy. And these flares, as you can see, this one behind me is leaning a little bit. When it's windy, it makes the, the flare a little less efficient. So the flare is burning methane at the end of the day, which is a greenhouse gas that's extremely heavy compared to CO2. It's uh, 30 to 50 times heavier, depending on the amount of time it spends in the atmosphere. And so when it's very windy and these flare sacks are blowing all around, very inefficient. Some studies say flares with wind that's higher than 10 miles per hour are 30, 30% efficient. You're having a significant amount of methane leak beyond that flare. And when you pipe that to an EPA certified generator, combust it in there, that's 99.99% efficiency. You're still creating CO2 emissions, but it's much more efficient compared to some flares in, in windy conditions. And then on top of that, which is more important, uh, you're creating positive economic value. So it's something Again, like I said earlier, we, we're doing off-take agreements, but now we're getting into joint ventures with producers who want to participate in the upside of sats that are being produced in our mining containers. And so the flare is turning from a, a drag on their balance sheets and their income statements into a, like a positive revenue stream, significantly more resilient and profitable at the end. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on the next podcast episode and new investing resources. What are your takeaways and thoughts on this discussion? Let us know in the comments section below.